Could both MLB and MLS be on their way to coming back? Find out in this next episode of Sideline Sports Podcast. Welcome to Sideline Sports Podcast. I am the host, Alex Naveja, and if you're not on the sideline, it's not Sideline Sports Podcast. Welcome to episode 31 of Sideline Sports Podcast. I am the host, Alex Naveja, and if you're not on the sideline, it's not Sideline Sports Podcast. And with me today is Gustavo Ortega, MLS insider and also soccer broadcaster. Gustavo, how are you doing today? Hi, Alex. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. Weird times, man. And you know, between this pandemic and what's going on, really missing sports. But I'm glad to be here with you talking a little bit about soccer. Always a pleasure to have you on the podcast, Gustavo. And always my partner. And very quickly wanted to talk about some news that we received earlier this week that all NCAA Division II college fall sports will be suspended we're talking about women's volleyball men's and women's soccer and even the beginning parts of men's and women's basketball so i know that's going to be a little bit disappointing for you gustavo i know you're really looking forward to even that soccer season for ncaa yeah it's a tough decision that was to be made but but the things are going here in california I kind of suspected that they were going to extend it to the fall, perhaps for the safety of the players, safety of the staff, of the fans. You know, it's been a tough couple of days trying to get him by, you know, without sports. It's, it's difficult. We used to have sports almost every day of the week, and now we have nothing. But it's for the, 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 the sake of the health of, of the, everyone involved in the sports world. I think it's important for them to look out for for the athletes first, first the students, and then make a uh, like usually business. Yes, it is very unfortunate. No division two fall sports as of now, but I mean, like I always, like I've been saying, Gustavo. Luckily, it's a suspension. A suspension can always be taken away, and it can always, if things and the curve does flattened down from moving on forward, there's always that, p- that possibility of it coming back. I mean, when they talked about with this pandemic barely starting off back in early March, they canceled all sports. They canceled all the March Madness tournaments, all the conference tournaments. They canceled college baseball, college World Series. They recently came out no Little League World Series, Gustavo. That's a that's such a big event that happens here in the United States. So no Little League World Series. There's so many sporting events that are getting canceled right now. But I know you have some great news to report on for all soccer fans, all MLS fans. And I know you're talking a little bit about LAFC and Galaxy. Right. Yeah, like you mentioned, Alex, it's, it's, it's tough because... We're probably going to be living a summer without sports, and it's been a while since that ever happened. You know, it's probably the first time that's ever happened in, in so long. And for us who live off sports, it's, it's difficult to digest because, like you said, the World, Little World Series is going to be canceled. The Olympics have been canceled. They have been moved to next year. Uh, we don't know when the NBA is going to come back or the MLB if it's going to be safe to play, as well for the MLS, we'll, we'll, which we'll be talking about in a couple of minutes, uh, they're, and they're planning to continue to save their 25th season. But, yes, it's, a, it's a, like we mentioned, tough times, but as long as people are healthy and staying home, hopefully we'll, we could get back to the normal routine sooner than later. So I know you were... Already getting ahead of the curve right now, Gustavo. Uh, you do have some things to report on about LAFC and with the Galaxy. And you started, you're talking about how teams are starting to practice now. Yeah, well, there was uh, news well, last week when the MLS broke out the news that players were able to have individual workouts in the field facility of their club starting on May 6th. So some teams took 
advantage of that, but they had to do it via restricted uh, uh, pro protocol. You know, they had to check the temperature, wear face masks, hand sanitize their, 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 pretty much their hands, and other, um, amongst others, they had to go through a health department protocol. We saw a couple of teams come out, like uh, Kansas City, Sporting Kansas City, Atlanta United, and the next day we had, on which was last Thursday, we had LAFC, the first pro soccer team or sports team in LA to come out and practice after the league was suspended uh, on March 12th, after the second week of uh, play. And they practiced again on Friday, but they didn't practice Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday because there was a miscommunication between the club and the health department services, which the health department services didn't clear uh, the, pretty much the soccer teams, both LA Galaxy and LAFC. That's why LA Galaxy was uh, packed to start practicing on Monday, but they didn't get the green light. So there was a little miscommunication between LAFC and the, and the health department, but supposedly the Galaxy got the green light and will be starting to practice well, they're supposed to start practicing today. We'll see if they do it later on or tomorrow, Friday. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how both teams now get back into play. They do have to follow, like we mentioned, Alex, uh, restricted uh, protocols to maintain the players safe and as well as the, as the staff, uh, the coaching staff, uh, and, and all the people that are part of the club. But it's a big step for MLS who are also eyeing for an early start in June 1st because they plan to move all the 26 MLS teams to Orlando and have a mini tournament over there and pretty much stay in those uh, in that city for quite a while. And there's something that's been going on. Uh, it's interesting because they were saying there was Orlando, Dallas, or Kansas City as a possible series to resume the the 25th season for MLS. You know, it's a big year. We mentioned it in previous uh, podcast, Alex. is the 25th season of the MLS, so they were trying to make it a great and unforgettable season, but unfortunately, well, it will be now uh, unforgettable because of the pandemic that happened, pretty much stopping play during the second week of, of, of the season. So, Gustavo, are practices being ran a little different? Are, are they taking extra precautionary measures during practices, or is it just basically looking the same? No, well, it's, it's more restricted now, Alex. Like I mentioned, players have to come in, force, in, group, in groups of fours now, and there's, there's different time sets for every player. So they have to practice in different parts of the field separately. They can't do group acti activities yet. They can't go. They can't even go inside the locker rooms yet. They have to just maintain outside of the facilities. Practice outdoors. Um, when they come in, they have separate ways to park. They have to park very separate apart. They have to wear face masks like like us people do when we go outside. They have to wear gloves. They have to get their temperature checked in, and they have to the the, the teams have to have a sort of uh, protocol that has to be go that has to go through the MLS and the health department to make sure that the the players are being kept safe, and it's it, it's been something that we're not used to see. You know, we see players just come out and practice in groups, have their laps and everything. But now, nowadays, it's just four players at a time, different times a day, and making sure that they've been getting, they're getting tested before and after practices, and so they could go home safely and not also also not infect their families as well. Have tests been issued at all to teams, or has that been stressed at all as well as you know after these protocols? Yeah, well, it, it has to be for every team who is planning. Like, let's remind the, the, the fans that it's a, it's a volunteer individual workout. It's not forced on players. Like, 
these players are still can still be able to practice or train at their house or their home. But if you would like to come out and practice ball touches and all that stuff, you have to come out over here to the facility. And that's something that they have to be really careful. And as for, it, it, it varies in different states, Alex, because they, every, every state is different. They have different restrictions. Right here in California, we know, we know the governor pretty much put uh, a big restriction all the way probably until August. So it's going to be interesting to see how other MLS teams practice. With a San Jose Earthquake, who's not from the area up north, it still hasn't had the opportunity to practice because of how severe the pandemic is over there. So it's, it's or the stay-at-home orders are over there in San Francisco and San Jose uh, on, the, on the cities up north. But so far here, the major... Garcetti has given the green light for uh, for the team to practice and as well as the health department and we're just waiting to see when both teams come out and get and get get back to the field. Now how how about LAFC? I mean I know you're talking about that miscommunication, mishap that, that was going on there, but have you seen have you seen anything go on with LAFC or anything? Well, not recently, Alex. We haven't gotten any news on what the club plans to do or when they plan to resume the individual workout. I know they did get the green light to... Well, Galaxy did get the green light to, to start practicing. I'm not 100% sure on LAFC yet. They did practice, like I said, Thursday and Friday, but since then they haven't practiced at all. We're still waiting to see if they're going to get the green light from the health department of Los Angeles and see if they get back to the field. Final question, Gustavo. How optimistic are you in a scale of 1 to 10 that the MLS will be back in June? I would say right now, Alex, it's about a 6 because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the league is pretty much hoping to return in June and set a mini tournament over there in the city of Orlando uh, where they have a space of 220 acres which is owned by the by Disney and ESPN, the worldwide of sports. And I think the MLS is aiming for that because they want to get the players back to the field and and practice. But it'll take about three to four weeks for them to get back in shape, work in groups and as well as get back in rhythm. You know, it's not easy to come back after almost two months of not being no, I'm not having any playing time, so it's 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 a gamble for me. I'm not 100 percent sure if this is going to happen. The players still have to decide if they want to be apart from their family for that long. We don't know if or how they're going to get tested. Uh, it's a lot of testing to get done. You know, not just players, but also like coaches, uh, essential employees who will be part of the uh, of the tournament as well, uh, media as well. So it's a lot to take in because it's going to cost a lot of money. But And then also remember, there's not going to be any fans at all in this in these games. It'll be behind closed doors. And, but it's something that it, it's, it's, in the, it's, in the, it's in the works. The teams want to – I'm sure the players want to play, but if the players don't feel safe to do so, I'm sure they won't do it. And they're still in talk with the Major League Soccer Player Association – which is something that they're still in talk because players want to resume play, but as long as they're still healthy. And like I mentioned, being away from family, it's kind of a tough situation. And what's going to happen if a player, uh, hopefully it doesn't happen, right? But let's say they get COVID-19. How, what's the protocol? Are they going to be on isolation? How's that going to affect the players? How is that going to change the system? But something that's going to be optimistic to look forward to in this weekend is the Bundesliga coming back, which is the German league. We'll see how they take precautions in the, in the soccer field and as well outside of the field. And it's, it's going to be an interesting model to follow, Alex. But I think it, it, if it's something that they really can get to work on, it, it'll be a huge opportunity for MLS because it's probably going to be the first league to restart once again. Uh, and a lot of people are going to be watching, including sports fans 
from other from other leagues, you know, like let's say you might not like soccer, but hey, there's a sport going on. You know, you saw there's a lot of people watch the UFC fight last weekend, even though there was no crowd at all. But it's it's gonna be interesting to see because besides Orlando, there was there were talks that Dallas and as well as Kansas City were the options to resume play in those in those states. But it's, it's gonna be hard to see if if the teams come back into their their respective homes because of the like we said the restrictions on health uh, issues, especially here in California. So there you have it. Potentially, the MLS potentially going to be the third, maybe fourth, even fifth professional league to come out right after the Korean baseball organization and even with the UFC. But we're going to go ahead and step aside. But when we come back, we'll talk about the potential of even Major League Baseball making that move to come back and play a non-crowded stadium and potentially opening day, 4th of July. Maybe. Make sure to tune in on the second half of Sideline Sports Podcast, where if you're not on the sideline, it's not Sideline Sports Podcast. Hi, my name is Jennifer Munoz, and I play for the Guatemala Women's National Team, and you're here watching Sideline Sports Podcast. Welcome back to Sideline Sports Podcast. I am the host, Alex Neveca, and with me today is Gustavo Ortega, MLS insider and soccer play-by-play -play broadcaster. First half, we were talking about the potential of MLS coming back to action as early as June. Only two or three weeks away there. Now, another potential of Major League Baseball even making that move to return. The owners had a meeting with the Players Association and, of course, with the league. And there was a proposal going around of uh, the league coming back into action. And they said opening day would be July 4th. So now, after the meetings went on on Tuesday, the approval and the thumbs up has gone through. So now, Gustavo, there's going to be spring training going on in home stadiums in June. So what are your thoughts on that as far as all the teams going to be having spring training in their own stadiums? Well, I think it's going to be challenging, Alex, although it, it could be done, you know, playing games without crowds. We're going to have to get used to that for the next couple of months. But I mean, if the testing is available, you said as much as you can. Keep the players safe. I think it's important because you don't want to get no players infected with this COVID-19 situation. And it'll be a good or good good news for baseball fans across the world to see that their teams coming back. You know, the season was supposed to start back in March, and it's been a long time since since baseball. We've seen baseball. And I think it, 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 it all depends on, the, like we said, the restrictions of every state. But here in California, the governor, Gavin Newsom, will pretty much um, planning to extend the quarantine all the way to August, so three more months of that. And it, 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 it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that affects any type of play of any, of any professional sport here in California. That's correct, Gustavo. Another thing to add on to that proposal is that despite spring training going to be going on in each team's respective stadiums, when the season does start on 4th of July, they're not going to be playing in their own stadiums. The reports have gone out that they will be playing in either the states of Arizona, Texas, or even Florida. Making sense of the new divisions that have come out where it has been a whole new West Division, Central Division, and Eastern Division. So you can only imagine how that's going to be arranged. You can probably say West Division is going to be playing in Arizona, Central Division is going to be playing in Texas, and then the Eastern Division is going to be playing over in Florida. And I don't know if you've taken a look at it, Gustavo, but the divisions are pretty interesting. And the one in episodes 
previous when we had the guys from the GNT Talk Sports Show, they were talking about how the Dodgers and the Astros are in the same division. If the season mm -hmm. does go through and Dodgers and Astros are in the same division, I'm already calling it. It's going to be a fun year. Yeah, it it it, it will be a great series, Alex. After all that happened during this off season, finding out the Astros pretty much cheated their way to that World Series title in 2017, and that rivalry that created, you know, fans were really looking forward to that matchup between Dodgers and and Astros, and as well as the Astros coming to Anaheim for the first series of the, well, first opening weekend series against the Angels. A lot of Dodger fans that I talked to were really excited to go and boo the, the, the Astros out there. And I think, although it's going to be different, I think the fans would enjoy seeing that rivalry, but I think it's going to be bittersweet because they won't be able to, you know, let their thoughts out against the Astros in a baseball game. So, Gustavo, there's been a big controversy going on right now. Are you for the designated hitter position being used throughout the whole entire league, or would you like to keep the same old rules with national, when an American League team goes to the National League ballpark, the pitcher is going to hit? Honestly, Alex, I like uh, having the pitcher hit the, the baseball. You know, one of those great memories you get is the pitcher hitting the ball out of the park. And we've seen it a couple of times in the last years. Pitchers who are able to hit, I think those might be coming clutch. Imagine a World Series where a pitcher just hits the home run and wins the game for the team. Imagine how memorable, memorable that would be for everyone, you know. And lately we've seen a lot of athlete pitchers come out like Otani, who comes from Japan, who pitches and hits. You never know. I think it's, it's, it's something, if the pitchers want to hit, let them, let them play. I like the way you think, Gustavo. Just let the kids play. I mean, I think for just this short season of 82 games, I'm okay with the designated hitter being all over the place, but once we go back to the 162 games in a season, then I believe that the National League st needs to stay with the pitcher being able to hit for himself. But that's all the time we have left here in Sideline Sports Podcast. We thank you all so much for tuning in today. If you really enjoyed this episode, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you are enjoying this, this content, please hit the subscribe button. We have some great guests coming on the podcast every week, coming in and out, like Gustavo Ortega. And very quickly, like I should have done in the beginning of the podcast, I just want to say thank you so much to all the healthcare workers risking their lives each and every day to treat this pandemic and try to flatten out the curves along with all the law enforcement working out right there day in day out keeping us safe thank you all so much from the bottom of our hearts from the sideline sports podcast crew and of course gustavo ortega has a special announcement on his new podcast that he's working on right now for soccer gustavo thank you so much alex i appreciate the opportunity that you have given me to be out here with you once again to talk mls soccer and yeah i'm planning to do a soccer podcast called Inside the Net Podcast we'll, that will probably be focusing focusing on MLS soccer and as well as Liga MX and probably some soccer of Europe, but mostly focus on the local soccer. Uh, thank you so much for the shout out, Alex. Once again, it was a pleasure to spend time with you, talk soccer, and hoping that, that your family is safe and stay safe. And as well, hopefully, hopefully we see some sports back soon. If not, then health and staying safe is what matters right now. Well, again, Gustavo, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I hope you and your family stay safe. And thank you all so much for tuning in to this one. I'm Alex Nemeka signing off. As If you're not on the sideline, it's not a sideline sports podcast. Have a good one, everybody, and make sure to stay safe.